For skin so firm, you'll love showing it off the way you used to. New from Olay, Firming Reviver Body Lotion. It plumps surface cells with moisture so skin rebounds for firmer, younger looking skin. The real world testing we do here at Honda's Safety Research Center enables us to design products that provide exceptional protection for drivers, passengers, and pedestrians. Because what we learn in here makes a difference out there. Every day, millions of people go to Match.com, and so many of them find love. So is online dating for you? Now, Match.com has created a new starter kit so you can find out. And for a limited time, it's free. Only at Match.com, the number one site for love. Rise and shine, kids. They would face any challenge together. But now... I'll be back, I promise. They must separate to survive. Walt Disney Pictures presents... Good boy, Max. You brought her home. Disney's Eight Below. Own it on Disney DVD June 20th. the cool taste of the Bacardi Mojito. For a smarter way to move, we designed the pods container. We deliver it, you pack it in your own time, then we move it or store it in our warehouse till you're ready. Safe, easy pods for moving and storing. Miss easy on the eyes, miss totally smoking, miss... Don't take a picture of me fixing my boob. Hello, uncovered hidden lives of Miss USA, Wednesday at 9 on E. There's no better way to experience the wide open ocean than on board a cruise ship. Every year, these giant vessels transport thousands of people to exotic lands in comfort and style. But what happens when something goes wrong? And why is the law at sea so different than that on land? In December 2005, a congressional committee started investigating onboard crime and passenger disappearances. But the $13 billion cruise line business showed little sign of slowing down. In March 2006, industry officials announced plans to build 28 new liners over the next four years. The numbers are going up almost exponentially. I mean, it's, uh, a lot of it has to do with 9-11. People want to stay closer to the home, and cruise ships is a viable option. Because these ships are foreign flagged and operate in international waters, American laws often do not apply. Cruise companies operate outside the reach of U.S. labor regulations, income taxes, and most law enforcement. That ship is flying a flag of convenience. It could be the Bahamas, Panama, Liberia. So when a passenger gets on a Liberian flag vessel, they're not in the United States. They're in Liberia. In May 1999, members of the Decker family looked forward to their first cruise, they boarded the carnival ship Sensation for a week-long voyage in the Caribbean. The first few days on the cruise um, was exactly how it, you, you would think a cruise would be. It was just a celebration, and we were assured that our children would be cared for. There were teen groups, there were children's groups. You know, this was part of the advertising package. The version of events you are about to hear is based on Marilyn Decker's sworn statement taken on August 16, 2002 and submitted to Miami's 11th Judicial Circuit Court. In the document, Marilyn Decker explained what her daughter claimed happened on the fifth day of the cruise. Here is Jamie's story in her own words. On this particular day, we uh, decided to go swimming as a group, and then from there we were planning on going to the ping pong table and having a ping pong tournament. So I decided to go take a shower and um, wandered off by myself to my, to my stateroom. And I uh, walked to the to the main elevators and got in and then was approached by a crew member who also got in and um, he asked me if I was having fun. So then um, he asked me if I wanted to see where the dolphins played. 
At this point, I was a little awkward, but at 12, you don't think anything of it. He was a uniformed crew member. There's no reason for me not to trust him. Jamie says the man led her through a door deep below deck. He took me to this huge machinery type room and uh, showed me all the portholes. And he took me to the very, very front. I was frightened at this point. And, and at that point, he grabbed me and he, he threw me up against um, this big round thing. I started screaming and crying and yelling and, and it just, you know, <laughs> just beating, but it didn't matter. He, he uh, started kissing me and touching me and he laid the dress out on the ground and laid me down on the ground and just uh, at that point had intercourse with me. Before he left, the attacker allegedly threatened the 12-year-old girl. And he just whispered, you know, I'm tell anybody about this. I'm going to kill you and your brother and your sister and your mom and your dad and your dog. Marilyn Decker's statement went on to say that Jamie rushed back to her cabin and took a shower. And I was there for a long time. And the whole time in the shower, all I was trying to do is tell myself that it hadn't happened and that, you know, just to put it behind me and just to let it, you know, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. And, and I'm just going to be OK. Jamie rejoined her friends at the ping pong table. Then she lost control of her emotions. I was hysterical, and I couldn't explain what had happened because I, you know, now I have to explain why I'm crying. The group leader took her to a private room to talk. I told her about the elevator and about the, the room, but I didn't tell her that I, he had intercourse with me. I told her that he had hugged me and made me uncomfortable. So I told him that much of the story and no more. She was just a mess. She was crying hysterically, like, worse than I've ever seen her cry before, and she looked miserable. I've never seen anybody that upset before. She's sitting there, and she's crying. And the story that we were told by security was that this crewman had hugged her and had scared her, and that she then ran away. The first thing out of my mouth was, oh my god, you know, he could have raped you. I said that out loud. And you don't know how many times I've replayed that in my mind. It was the worst thing I could have said, but I didn't know. Ship security took control of the incident. At no time did Jamie tell them that she had been raped. The counselor was really nice and genuinely concerned. But as soon as it left her hands and I was involved with the higher ups, I felt like I had done something wrong. The whole attitude really from security was, again, uh, that maybe it hadn't even happened, but you know, maybe she was just a, an emotional child making up this story. So they told her that she needed to show us all at this point where she had been. When I went back to that room, I thought he'd be hiding there. I mean, I was 12 years old. I didn't know what was going to happen. All I knew was that he couldn't see me taking them there. Next, Jamie faced a lineup of crew members from behind a one-way glass window. And I was supposed to pick him out. But before I did so, uh, head of security you know, said, whoever you pick out, you'll be changing this man's life forever. And I didn't pick anyone out. I was scared. That was it. That was the end of it. There was no more, uh, no more contact from them. That was the end of it. DHS investigates contacted Carnival Cruise Lines about Jamie's case, but they declined to comment on camera. The company provided a written response, saying that during the cruise, no allegation of a sexual assault was ever made, and that the matter was fully investigated and properly handled. I believe that the cruise ship should have been suspicious. They should have, they should have called the ship's doctor. I believe they should have said, you know, maybe we should do an exam. The family bought their dream sailboat and spent the next two years crisscrossing the Gulf of Mexico. But the voyage was troubled. After the alleged incident, Jamie started behaving badly. From that day forward, she changed. She was smoking, she was drinking, she was sneaking off the boat. She hated our boat. She was angry, she was claustrophobic, she was having nightmares. There was nothing I could do, no one I could talk to. I didn't even understand what was going on. I didn't know really who I was. I didn't know what I stood for. I didn't know right from wrong, really. Uh, all I knew was that there was something that inside me that was different, that screamed for attention or screamed for bad stuff to happen. Alcohol was a really big factor. Eating disorders was a really big. Um, I was scared to death of the dark. 
Jamie kept her secret for almost three years, but when she was 15, she confided in a school friend. The girl told Jamie's mother. I was very straightforward, and I said, well, your friend tells me that you were raped. And then that's when she said, remember, Mom, the crews, the crewmen on the crews is what she said. And that's when it was like, oh, God, why was I so stupid? Jamie got counseling and began to heal emotionally. Marilyn consulted an attorney. They filed a lawsuit against Carnival Cruise Lines, alleging, among other things, negligence. Carnival filed a response denying all of the Decker's charges. The case was settled out of court on March 18, 2003. As with all settlements with the cruise lines, there's a confidentiality clause as to the terms of the settlement. The only thing that can be revealed is that it, it did settle. After years of counseling and recovery, Jamie started college and got a full-time job. At 19, her life was back on track. So I feel like I'm finally accomplishing something in my life, whereas before I felt like I was going in circles. She's really trying hard. She's goal-oriented. And I, and I have no doubt that she's going to make it and that she's going to be, quote, unquote, OK. She's doing better. I mean, she still has some, some serious issues. Seven years down the line, there are still times uh, I have nightmares. And I, I don't think that'll ever go away. For those who've suffered at sea, the allure of the deep will always be tainted by memories and fear. If I go to sleep, sometimes I can picture myself being back out there in the water. But most will continue to be drawn to the ocean's wild beauty. Once you get a taste of that power and you really like it and you relish in it and you revel in it, man, there's nothing better than giant surf. The water relaxes me. It's a part of me. It's something that moves me in a way that I can't quite explain it. Every life sprang from the ocean, so another ocean, you know? Thousands of people leaving their homes one step ahead of rising floodwaters.